Hello, everyone. My name is Jen Telefer. I'm the Academic Programs Coordinator at the School of Architecture, Planning and Landscape. I think we're going to get started now. I'm going to apologize in advance if I freeze up for a second here or there. I think my internet's good, but if it's not, I will be back. So just hang in. <laughs> Welcome to our first information session of the year. Thank you so much for coming. It's great to have you all here. Before we get started, I just wanted to let you know that this session is being recorded. We would like to acknowledge and pay tribute to the traditional territories of the peoples of Treaty 7, which include the Blackfoot Confederacy, comprising Siksika, Pekani, and Kainai First Nations, as well as the Sudina First Nation and the Stony Nakoda, including the Chiniki, Bears Paw, and Wesley First Nations. The City of Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta, Region 3. By the signing of Treaty 7 in 1877, the university recognizes that we are all treaty people. Today, we will provide an overview of all the awesome things about SAPL, and then we will invite our two associate deans to speak about their respective programs. Following the presentations, we will have a question and answer period until our program ends at 6.15 Calgary time. If you have a question throughout the presentation, please put it in the chat and we will answer those during the Q&A section. At SAPL, we offer a distinctly different design school experience. We train future leaders to be positive change makers locally and globally. Our students learn how to develop solutions to some of the world's greatest problems through challenge-based learning, building, prototyping, and collaborating with industry. We have a rich interdisciplinary design-based philosophy and a proven commitment to working with community to prepare students for meaningful professional careers. What makes us different? Our approach. We base our programs around community-engaged learning and entrepreneurial mindset future-focused design, research, and social innovation. SAPL students work closely with the City of Calgary, as well as design and planning firms, arts and advocacy groups, and economic development organizations to affect change. Additionally, we consistently engage with the community through courses, conferences, lectures, workshops, and exhibitions. You can see some examples of this on the slide. Our Mayor Nancy, and our alumni, David Fortin, at the Indigenous Design Symposium in 2018, Master of Landscape Architecture students with their installation, Alice in Wonderland, for Parking Day, an international Take Back the Streets movement for urbanists, and kids interacting with a lid installation at Beakerhead, an annual week-long arts and science mashup experience that takes place across the city. Our research projects leverage the collaboration of academia, industry, and policymakers. They explore ways to increase Calgary's downtown and neighborhood vibrancy while reducing the city's environmental footprint. This provides advanced skill building opportunities and promotes entrepreneurial job creation and economic diversification in Calgary's building and construction industry. Some examples include the Fourth Avenue flyover, our Dean John Brown trying out the alleyway art, Nine Block, a project working with the city of Calgary, and the C-Space Studio, which is a series of installations in front of a new cultural social art hub that experiments with fabrication techniques. We are training the next generation of city builders and our students are learning how to help create great communities with economic prosperity, vibrant public spaces and green areas, good transportation and safe neighborhoods. But it also means creating a future that is environmentally sustainable, socially equitable and infectious disease resilient. Across the campus, SAPL researchers and students are working to impact the future. Social innovation and community engagement is embedded into all of our programs. The Advocates for Equity in Design Education, AEDE, is a collective of SAPL students dedicated to providing a safe platform for critical engagement with issues of justice and equity in design. They are working on several initiatives that promote the social and political consciousness of the SAPL community. Now I will invite Alexa Desjardins, our student recruitment specialist, to tell you more about our research initiatives, programs, facilities, and student supports. Thank you, Jen. Hello, everyone. Uh, the City Building Design Lab, or CBDL, is the first and only hub in Alberta for trailblazing research and discussions about entrepreneurial approaches to city building. Our faculty and researchers are a collective of explorers, artists, statisticians, and engineers focused on producing design-based research, publications, and exhibitions to shape the future of city building. At SAPL, we have over 500 incredible students who are taking courses from our undergraduate and graduate programs. 
We offer undergraduate courses for all UCalgary students and a minor in architectural studies for those in their third and fourth years, as well as graduate professional programs in architecture, planning, and landscape architecture, which you'll learn more about today. Finally, we also offer research-based masters and PhDs programs in environmental design and a doctor of design. SAPL has a great instructor to student ratio and two locations. Our main campus in Northwest Calgary, as well as our newer downtown space, is the City Building Design Lab or CBDL, which opened in 2018. Both our Northwest campus and the CBDL have workshops. If you're in Calgary, we encourage you to attend our upcoming open houses for a tour of our facilities. More information and registration pages can be found on the website. If you're out of town, we can, you can experience our student spaces by using the 360 virtual tour on our website. Our design education includes practical engagement with ideas, people, and systems around the world. Our students have experienced exciting study abroad opportunities in their programs. They have traveled one week or one semester to locations such as Barcelona, Tokyo, Norway, Los Angeles, Boston, and Tijuana. SAPL endeavors to provide financial support to our students. We offer competitive entrance and continuing scholarships, as well as graduate assistantships in teaching and research. These opportunities provide skill building, professional development, and a unique academic experience for our students. The CBDL is a gathering place for leading designers and thinkers from around the world to share knowledge and collaborate with communities through our SAPO lecture series called Design Matters. In our graduate studios, as well as block week courses and professional continuing education. SAPO also hosts lunch and learn events to enrich students learning experiences. To further build the global conversation, we launched CBDL, uh, sorry, CBDX last year, which is City Building Design Experiments and Exhibitions, which is primarily concerned with the future of city building, tackling critical design issues, initiating change, fostering new ideas, and showcasing innovation. The initiative explores timely design issues through two annual international design competitions, resulting in exhibitions and a publication. Now for the main event, I'd like to introduce our wonderful speakers today. First, we will hear from Catherine Hamill, our Associate Dean Academic Architecture, who will discuss our architecture programs, the minor in architectural studies and the master of architecture. Following Catherine's presentation, we will hear from Dr. Enrica Delara, our Interim Associate Dean Academic Planning and Landscape Architecture, who is here to speak about our Master of Planning and Master of Landscape Architecture programs. Thank you, Alexa and Jen. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome. Nice to have your attention for a few minutes to speak about SAPL's architecture program. I'm one of the faculty, the faculty members and the current associate dean academic. Um, it's a rotating position, so we all get to a hand at navigating the mothership. And what that means is we get to facilitate the, the course themes and the selection. And um, maybe one of the first things to consider is what are those based on? First and foremost, uh, we are a professional uh, accredited program. There are currently 12 of those in the country. Uh, every five years or so, the Canadian Architectural Certification Board sends a team of both academics and practitioners, and sometimes that's one identity, so they cross over to review the program. Uh, the facility as well as how well we prepare students. And um, it's a profession that requires an internship after you graduate. You can't practice with, uh, you know, in different ways, but to call yourself an architect, you do need to go through that process uh, and pass an exam before you can legally be uh, certified or be an architect. One of the reasons, there's debate as to whether that's the right thing, but why the rigor? I think because architecture and design have a tremendous impact and responsibility. Um, as we get to shape and reshape the environments that people inhabit. And I think often some of the things I'm seeing include planning and landscape because the divisions aren't rigid between the, the, the professions. Um, considerations need to occur at numerous scales. And I think the beauty of the field is this range of scope of application. 
creating a beautiful home for, uh, for the few that can afford it is one dream. I think maybe uh, one that's passing quickly. Um, creating as many homes so that less suffer is another vision. And as our collective statement affirms, there is a pressing need at the moment, and I think has always been for human designed environments to be comprehensively integrated and to have significant less, significantly less impact on, uh, on the resources of the planet and its ecology. So as more and more people are shifting across the globe for many reasons and collect and recollect in cities, which is one of our areas of focus, there is much to consider on how we house a few humans as well as by implication humanity. So the range and scope of these applications is what frames the program. And it has become a question of justice as how the environment can be used to include and marginalize. And it's, that's no longer an elephant in the room, in the classroom or in society that we don't discuss. Before going into a bit more detail, maybe just uh, showcasing the details of how we deliver the program um, through this structure. It's important, I think, to speak of the pedagogy of the whole faculty. Yes, thank you, Jen. <laughs> she can read my mind after so many years. Um, in addition to some courses in the traditional lecture style where you, know, you sit and listen to people presenting, all programs in SAPO actually rely on a wider range of ways to deliver our teaching, most notably in design schools, uh, what is known as the studio. What is a studio pedagogy? It's, uh, I would say it's a fun way to get your hands dirty. Uh, what is sometimes referred to as experiential learning. It's not a lecture based, but students are guided to work on framed projects, both individually and in teams. You think, you visualize, you build, you discuss with yourself, that's towards the end. Before that, you discuss with your classmates, your instructors and guests, so that, that can be a community you're working with, with or invited experts from both uh, from the field, both local, national or international. And each student is provided, uh, as uh, Alex said, a workspace and uh, either on the main campus or in the downtown location. So you're immersed in the world you're dreaming of shaping. Next, Jen. Um, in terms of the architecture faculty, we have a diverse range with varied expertise. I can delve into each one's research uh, with this, but I suggest you go to the website uh, to see the areas of research the work they do, the laboratories they run, and how they practice what they preach. From energy consumption, we have robotic fabrication, life cycle analysis and material repurposing, upgrading our world rather than just rebuilding anew, uh, bridging traditional wisdom and modern knowledge for the Earth's future. So there's quite a range. We also have a very strong core of uh, what's often referred to as performative architecture, which is architecture using digital technologies to challenge the way the built environment is designed. Many are practicing architects, no, not yet. Many are practicing architects uh, and collaborate with industry, creating the light uh, while still building relevance. And in addition to the faculty, uh, we have the privilege of to rely on a number of, uh, of practicing designers and, uh, and architects in the city. And now with hybrid teaching modalities, we can reach further than our own borders for expertise to teach, who teach to augment what we can uh, expose our students to. And again, that ranges from uh, skill building applications, social histories of marginalization, how design can redirect uh, the process towards inclusion, universal design considerations, fabrication, and it keeps changing. It's not a repeated cycle so that there is a range as you move through the years. Again, the web would be a better place to, I hope you, you poke around there to see the range and scope of instructors, speakers, panelists that we had the opportunity both to listen to and interact with and learn from. Now you can go to the next one. So the structure of the program, there are, uh, there are a few ways to proceed in our uh, program to design a better future, as the slide says, a better world. From the undergraduate stream to the three-year first professional master's one and the two-year stream for people with a little bit more uh, previous experience or a degree in design. Next slide, please. 
there's uh, and this is on the site. I know it's hard to read, but that within ten minutes, it's, we won't delve into too much detail. It's more that there's a three-year first professional degree, and that is broken down as a foundation year plus two. And it's for a stream for people with some or no previous uh, ex architectural education. That, and that I would say is one, it's a great thing is it creates quite a diverse and amazing range of minds in our courses. We have people from business, psychology, biological sciences, arts, as well as architectural technology. And, and just putting all of that in a, in a class just makes us again with the field, look at things from a lot of different angles. There's a stream of people who have previous degrees and uh, they, they apply into the second year and do complete the degree in two years. And for those of you who are at the UFC, there is the undergraduate, the architecture minor that was referred to. Um, and admission is through application and selection. And what this offers is a gained year as the foundation year of the three-year professional degree is overlaps and is the same as the required one for the the com to complete the minor. So upon completing that minor, students are also completing their bachelor, and then they can apply if they choose to and have the option to apply to the two-year program. And if they get in, then they, have, they gain a, a, a year uh, attaining a Master of Architecture and coming from a different field. And often, I believe, Jen, urban studies is where the uh, most streams come from, but not necessary. So next slide. Um, as I mentioned, no matter the, the, the stream, um, the studio is the backbone structure where the diverse courses that you take, and these are examples from student work. Uh, I think uh, if I'm correct, all the slides are uh, from our own students or some of our invited guests. But the, the studio is where we have the diverse courses that get to be tested and applied through design projects. Um, there's a studio every term at the architecture program and they increase in scale and complexity. So it starts with an approach to site ecology and small structures and then gets larger in terms of multiple programs and scales and more of an urban setting. Some are grounded in really practical uh, things like developing building science and uh, how the, the building is put together and others are exercises to, to stretch our imagination to design a better future. So, so there, though there's a pattern, I'd say instructors do rotate. You don't have the same people every year or even throughout and uh, that leaves little room for mental stagnation. Next one. So within the structure, uh, also what you get is there are, what's uh, amazing I think is, is a strength is there are some required courses that all students have to take uh, that are mandated by the accreditation structure. And these include things like structures, building science, sustainability, graphics, among others, history. But the incredible opportunity is the fluidity of choice that each student has in addition to get additional credits. We offer a range each year that vary in themes. So students get to sculpt their own degrees, a, a part of it, and shape them to augment the knowledge that they would like to their own liking uh, to develop so that they can start shaping their professional uh, direction. And at the beginning of each term, you're offered a map, uh, not a literal map, but a map, something like that, through which you choose to navigate. And that map gets redrawn every semester. Next. So the, the range of these courses, they would be referred to as uh, have a few different formats. We have the, the electives, like three unit electives or 1.5. We have block weeks when the courses stop and you have a different like one week seminar, um, often by external people that are teaching specific things. Uh, or the selectives, which is a course that works alongside a studio uh, that supports the studio in the instructor's area of specialization. So it could be about uh, energy. And so you're working with this instructor and developing that component into a little bit more detail. Samples um, from some of these courses, I say like some titles I have is like form through fabrication, looking at uh, Timber's digital future, 
We've had architecture activism and the new gravity looking at uh, how to address climate change in, in practice and not just in theory. We look at uh, BIM building information modeling, uh, looking at the digital twin, which is a big thing now is we have a virtual reality of our own buildings and who owns that. So these are just a few examples of some of the additional electives. Um, yeah, and often we have two or three main ones where we have external guests that fly in for just that one week and we do an intensive study with them. And I think I'm close to my time. The last slide, Jen, uh, please. And uh, the last thing I'd like to touch upon is we, what uh, is often referred to as live projects where we offer that uh, a range in the scale of involvement, because some of them is just you, your instructor and your paper. And that's why I was referring to talking to yourself. But as it develops, uh, we have outreach to different communities, both professional and otherwise. We have some design built projects where a full scale structure is built and activated in the city by students and instructors. And there was reference to the one on McLeod Trail uh, by our building that was done last year or yeah, finished last year. We have other ways we do that. It's through studios, uh, the senior stu uh, research studios where for example, this year we have one where we're working with the uh, Cultivate Cochrane a group that's developing the what they call the passive solar roller, which is Cochrane's educational greenhouse on wheels. So it's not necessarily building the thing, but just starting to uh, integrate and work with them. And the last highlight is the work integrated studio we have, which occurs as students enter their last year and the, the third year and is a collaboration between the academ academy and the industry, the practices. And it, deliv it delivers an interprofessional learning based on projects of social and technical design. So this studio, as students are near graduation, is to connect students, faculty members, um, researchers, and practitioners in teams to address the challenges that are facing our communities, our cities, our, our regions. So it's uh, through the lens of architecture, of course, and each year we put out a call uh, to design thinkers to propose designs and we select different research projects to have a variety. So, and I believe last year's were on the site in terms of hopefully we can provide, it's a way to provide some valuable experience with, within the profession to create networks and directions for this future of students in, in, in the area. And as a finish, I'd like to say both uh, building both structures and relevance is a tremendous act of our faculty, not just architecture. It can be what we see around us, but it can be so much more. So it's not just the buildings. The scope of the field is incredible. And, the, and these days consideration is urgent. What can architects do? I would say no more harm is a big one. So the accountable architect has an account of complexities and uncertainties with openings to recognize the forces of change, to act with a generous and expansive perspective, to create social arrangements, and I'd say to create, and I quote Rebecca Solnit, an option where the unimaginable, unimaginable becomes ordinary. So there's a lot of room to investigate and not just replicate. And so it is not an easy time for the profession, but is also a very important and relevant time. With that, I think I'm at my time. Thank you for your attention. And uh, I'll leave you with Enrica, the Associate Dean Academic of the Planning and Landscape Programs. Thank you. Thank you, Katharina. Hello, everyone. It is very exciting for me to talk about uh, our professions to future students uh, and future professionals. The path uh, you envision for your career is absolutely important. It is about uh, the passion you feel and the selection and discovery of the education environments uh, that can enable you to translate uh, that passion into knowledge and skills uh, into your profession, your everyday job. I wish today we can provide you with uh, the information you need for the decision making about your education and career path. Regarding the master in planning and the master in landscape architecture at our school, 
There are numerous opportunities for shared learning experiences and cross pollination between the two programs and also with the Master in Architecture. There is an inspiring quote by landscape architect Michel Corajou. In the landscape, there is not a hard limit so closed that it does not crack and open on adjacent spaces. The elements of a landscape are always characterized by their faculty of overflowing. Metaphorically, also among design disciplines, there is no hard boundary, as Catherine already highlighted. Both planning and landscape architecture focus uh, not only on design objects, but uh, on processes, understanding tangible and intangible forces, dynamics, flows of energies, bodies, and information. Both in planning and landscape architecture, time is a, a key dimension, and evolution changes, transformations, metamorphoses are key concepts. Professional planners and landscape architects can effectively contribute to address major current global challenges, such as climate change, social justice, equity, diversity, and inclusion, cross-cultural cohabiting. Next, please. The expertise of the professors teaching in the two programs covers the broad spectrum of topics embraced by the planning and landscape architecture disciplines and translates into opportunities for students to be engaged in a variety of fascinating projects during course time, but also as a research assistant. Briefly, <laughs> I mention only a few topics, uh, themes, uh, and um, context. The Urban Lab, uh, co-directed by Sandalak and uh, Alani Suribi, focuses on research on urban morphology, cultural landscapes, and the relationships between urban form and public health. Fabian Neuhauser is curating Next Calgary, a platform for innovation in co-created content, developing strategies for a stakeholder participation and implementation lead vision for the city of later. Sasha Tsenkova specializes in sustainable cities, urban planning and growth management, housing policy and comparative urban development, Jocelyn Macedo's expertise include uh, city design and urban form, urban ecology, land policy and land tenure, housing policy, urban planning history. Craig Gerlach's work addresses topics such as food security, water and energy systems in remote northern villages and community health. Thomas Patrick Keenan is an expert on cybersecurity and crime prevention in the built environment. With focus on landscape architecture, Chris Fox research explores the relationships between craft, materials, construction, the design process, and the value systems of best practices in the sustainable era. Tawab Helimi's work addresses the challenge of planning and designing integrated green infrastructures of stormwater management and active transportation as a foundational framework for the societal, ecological, and economic vitalization of public space. For instance, is a Green Alley project developed in partnership with the Calgary Downtown Association demonstrates how to transform Calgary's downtown alleyways from forgotten and gritty into places of connectivity, productivity, and value. In the field of landscape architecture, the integration of uh, design with ecology is not that uh, a compelling aspect. Mary Ellen Tyler and Matthew Netvik, whose backgrounds include biological sciences, greatly contribute uh, to develop these aspects uh, within our programs. Tyler's research focuses on ecological design, environmental planning, and regional landscape ecology. Netvik's main research interests include urban ecology, ecological restoration, and point source stormwater management, for instance, rain gardens and bioswales. He is currently partnering with the city of Calgary for two research projects, including a sustainable parking lot and a boulevard. These research projects also involve work by students 
in his uh, ecological restoration course. About me, <laughs> I come to academia from professional practice like uh, numerous other professors at our school. I'm founder and director of the Landscape Architectural Film Park based in Italy with emphasis on public space design, urban renewal and rehabilitation of industrial and post-industrial sites, energy infrastructure and waste management sites. Currently at SAPOL, I'm developing an interdisciplinary project, Landscape in Motion, in the field of landscape design and performing arts with site choreographer Melanie Klotz. Let's now dig more specifically into the two professions and programs. The Master of Planning is a two-year first professional course-based graduate degree, which means no research thesis is required, accredited by the Professional Standards Board and fulfills the accreditation requirements of the Canadian Institute of Planners and the Alberta Professional Planners Institute. Professional planners are active change makers involved in shaping uh, the future of communities and cities and dealing uh, with uh, the day-to-day -day challenges of managing the social and physical aspects of complex urban systems and more broadly of human settlements including towns, rural settlements, etc. at different scales. According to the Canadian Institute of Planners, quote, what do planners do? Planners safeguard the health and well being of urban and rural communities by addressing the use of land, resources, facilities, and services with consideration to physical, economic, and social efficiencies. Planners make our communities a better place to live, work, and play. End quote. The program is characterized by formal based planning. Next, please. Involving design and graphic skills that enable our students to understand and communicate the connection between policy and planning decisions and the special forms that create on the ground. The morphology of the environment we live in has a huge impact on people's experience, on opportunities for uses and activities, on defining the sense of place and sense of belonging. Planning is about the governance of space. At our school, this next, we are particularly interested in the governance of changes through spatial arrangements. Our planning graduates understand how to use design in urban form making and understand the spatial consequences of plans and policies. Students work closely in cross-professional interdisciplinary teams often directly with community association to explore planning issues and the role of professional planners. Program courses and studios incorporate the real world context of practice as part of a student's experiential learning. Main study areas include computer modeling, GIS, spatial analysis, environmental planning, ecological design, history and theory of planning, site planning, community planning, professional practice, et cetera. Regarding the structure, the two-year curriculum is expected to be completed in five consecutive terms. The curriculum is structured around five, five, <laughs> Nice fire. I like it. <laughs> we need fire, good fire. Course studios, one for each term. The studio sequence has been designed to step by step acquire and apply knowledge and skills at a progressively higher level of complexity from site to community to cities to regions. The MLA program explores professional practice in the field of landscape design involving urban design, ecological design, regional landscape system, and cultural landscapes. Landscape architects provide innovative solutions to environmental and urban challenges. 
There is no single definition of landscape. However, the concept embraces both aesthetical and ethical aspects. According to Massimo Venturi Ferriolo, an Italian philosopher who focuses on landscape meanings, landscape is an ethical reality, project of the human world, which uh, began long ago, ago since uh, man began to transform his natural environment to create places for living, shaped by hand and spirit. Moreover, the notion of a landscape is, uh, quote, inseparable today from the scope of the city as the highest expression of artifice. Landscape architecture deals with uh, the complexity and processes which shape the environment and create the unique identity of places. Landscape architecture is inherently multidisciplinary involving a plurality of uh, disciplines and skills. Landscape architecture, absolutely relevant note, does not coincide, coincide with landscaping. It may include the landscaping as part of the competencies and interventions. Landscape architecture is more broadly about placemaking. In fact, landscape architects may have a significant impact on creating the conditions for livable, cities and environments, quality of life, healthy environments and healthy communities. The word architecture that forms a part of the term uh, landscape architecture carries uh, the meanings of design construction involving both technical and artistic aspects. The word architect from ancient Greek architecton etymologically means master builder director of works. The word architecture also evokes a living environment, a shelter, a space to live in. The MLA explores uh, landscape design and planning complexities at different scales from site-specific to regional, processes of forms in ecology, urbanization, land use, and social dynamics are explored through core courses, study abroad opportunities, and intense special topics courses with experts. Throughout the degree, students have a chance to work and learn from professionals from different disciplines, including engineers, architects, and planners, and work on projects directly involving communities, local governments, and the development industry. Regarding the program structure, the Master of Landscape Architecture is a first professional degree at the master level. It is also a course-based degree. The program curriculum incorporates the breadth of uh, Canadian Society of Landscape Architects accreditation requirements. It is a three-year curriculum, including uh, a foundation year uh, plus uh, two years uh, Landscape Architecture 1, Landscape Architecture 2, and it is expected to be completed in six consecutive terms. Applicants with a previous related design degrees, for instance, a Bachelor of Landscape Architecture, may have some or all the foundation year courses waived. Main study areas include computer modeling, site planning, environmental planning, and ecological design, design in northern latitudes, urban design, professional practice, landscape construction and technology, landscape response to climate change, plants in the landscape, GIS, spatial analysis, etc. You see the complete list here and also available in the website. The program is structured around the sequence of core design studios plus technology courses and design theory and methods courses. Also, the MLA studio sequence has been designed to acquire and apply knowledge and skills at progressively higher level of complexity. The, stu the six studios are a site planning studio and interdisciplinary studio shared with uh, planning students. Landscape architecture studio one, followed by regional landscape system studios, 
and uh, Landscape Architecture Studio 2. A comprehensive studio, it has the, a synthesis studios where uh, students can uh, uh, apply comprehensively all the previous uh, um, methods, techniques uh, learned uh, during, um, during uh, previous courses uh, into a full uh, um, development uh, until the detailed design of uh, a landscape architectural project and the senior research studio. Also in the master in landscape architecture and master in uh, planning, uh, the curricula include block courses, uh, selective and elective courses. For the MLA and uh, MA plan uh, um, programs, subject areas uh, as include affordable housing, uh, municipal planning, municipal law, the research part care block, uh, which focuses on co-design in the Calgary context, uh, principle of heritage conservation, ecological restoration, site graphics, etc. And as already mentioned, there are also opportunities to participate in international block and field study courses. Where are we? Where? <laughs> Where can you go from here? <laughs> Uh, probably is a question at this uh, stage of the presentation uh, you have. Once uh, graduated in architecture or planning or landscape architecture, the field of actions uh, may be the most varied. As mentioned, our objective is uh, to provide the education, the tools uh, you need to become uh, change makers. I do believe uh, being uh, humble and delicate uh, are important uh, attitudes. At the same time, uh, please think big and follow your dreams. We can say, as a matter of fact, that our alumni are recognized professionals contributing to innovative design and planning. Ja just a few examples now. Um, and uh, please, Catherine, if you want to jump in <laughs> with uh, a few comments, uh, you are welcome also because uh, your experience at the school uh, is, uh, is uh, much broader <laughs> than, than mine. Um, Mac Hulling, uh, Warner, um, Emides uh, graduate, and Ryan Palibroda uh, graduate from the architecture course, uh, co-founded uh, Alilis Design Studio, which demonstrates the power of uh, prosthetic as a fashion item and form of self-expression. Nakta Borgdorf, film director based in Hamburg, most known for his work with uh, BMW, Porsche, Mercedes, and the Jaguar, previous career as brand consultant and marketing director for internationally known fashion brands. Or uh, Aruli Tu, award-winning designer whose work has uh, spanned the creative direction, design direction, and innovation for top consumer brands, including Nike, Dell, Panasonic, Intel, Pioneer, and Mungaza. But I want also to highlight that Aureli has great interest in uh, businesses which provide social value, economic, and uh, aspirational benefits uh, for communities. In the country context, uh, we, we could uh, mention David Down, a chief uh, urban designer with the city of Calgary, Kate Thompson, a CEO of Calgary Municipal Land Corporation, leading the massive uh, revitalization of uh, Calgary's underutilized neighborhoods, globally acclaimed for work on uh, East Village, um, but also um, Mark Boutin Architectural Collaborative, national award-winning uh, architecture, uh, interiors uh, and public space design firm that is also uh, founded by, that is founded by Mark Boutin, um, one uh, professor, a professor at our school. Moda, uh, young firm founded by Dustin Cousins and Ben Clamper, pushing the boundaries of Calgary design. Um, Spectacle Bureau, working across the fields of architecture, urbanism, landscape, and object design. 
architecture and planning alumni are also part of uh, Civic Work Studio, a design for world and outcome driven uh, urban planning and design consultancy based in Calgary. Chris Kelly Studio, design and strategy for massive change and community transformation. And obviously we are not able to, <laughs> to conclude uh, a comprehensive exhaustive uh, list. Thank you, Enrica, and thank you, Catherine, both for your presentations. Um, if you're interested in learning more about SAPL, our programs, research projects, or student work, you can sign up for our newsletters or follow us on social media or read our news stories on our website. Um, for those of you who are ready to apply to SAPL, our application portal will be opening on September 1st. You can submit an online application and follow the requirements on our website to make sure you have everything complete. If you're in the process of preparing your application, we invite you to attend our other information sessions through the fall. We will have students and alumni share their experience at SAPL, as well as portfolio review sessions and open houses to, to showcase our facilities. You can find more information and registration pages on our website. Finally, if you have any questions, you can always email us or you can attend our drop-in Ask SAPL sessions that will be happening every month. We are happy to answer questions and provide guidance through the application process. Lastly, we wanna thank everyone for coming to our information session. We hope that you enjoyed learning more about our student experience, faculty and programs. We are going to or have dropped a one question survey into the chat box. If you could please complete it, we'd really appreciate it. And Alexa will take over from here. Awesome. So we have arrived at our question and answer period. Um, so if you do have a question, um, and you want to ask it live and in real time here on the Zoom, uh, you can use the Zoom reaction button to raise your hand um, and I'll call on you to ask your question or alternatively, if you're unable to say your question verbally, you can send it in the chat and then I'll read it aloud for you. Um, to get us started, we do have um, a few questions that come in through the uh, registration link. So the first one is uh, a student or a prospective student who is looking for some general advice for high school students who are interested in architecture. Sorry, I could not hear Alexa the question well. So sorry, um, just some general advice for high school students interested in architecture. Observe the world. I would say uh, one thing with our school, I was going to say that's for all applicants is to our buildings are open. I know it's COVID and now, uh, but with coming back to in person is to really to saunter to walk through the buildings. Uh, students, uh, our current students are very uh, open to chatting with people. Um, the final some of the course reviews some of the lectures like things are happening all the time so that's really a good way to get to know the school in terms of if you're interested um in architecture in general i mean there you know it, i would say looking at certain things to read but really it, you have to start to, trying to define what aspect of it you're interested in. Uh, one of the beauties with architecture is it has just a quite a range. So if you're somebody who's more practical and engineer based, you can develop that area. And then people's, if, if it's more where you're interested in the social component, uh, you know, studying institutions. So one of the things as you apply would be is what are you interested in? Not just uh, thinking, I can do an architectural drawing of a suburban home and that means I, I know architecture. And I think that would be one of the bigger things I would advise. Great, thank you. Okay, and we've had a question come in the chat here. What sort of things is the UFC looking for in regards to letters of reference from professors or employers? Um, Enric, I can say, I mean, again, that somebody is studious, somebody um, is willing to work hard, I would say it's not a, it's not a degree you can do part time in an easy casual way It does take commitment. Um, so, so the, the somebody who is disciplined. Um, 
somebody who is passionate, as Enrica used the word uh, about the field is important, um, that understands its relevance. So usually when you ask somebody, they, they know, like uh, making sure you ask the right people. So I would say uh, if maybe if I understand an underlying thing with the question is if we ask two or three is to have a range of people. So it could be somebody you worked for that can talk about your character that way. It could be somebody that talks about your ability to your creativity your ability to observe. It could be somebody that can talk about your craft. Um, so making sure to have a range you can't usually pre-direct the writer too much. I don't know, Enrica, if for your programs, you have something to add? I would say that um, I wouldn't be too much concerned uh, about uh, reference uh, from professors and employers. Obviously, uh, this is a, a a component of the of the application, um, but uh, as a, as an applicant, uh, uh, I would uh, try to craft uh, a portfolio uh, that can demonstrate uh, your uh, your passion, uh, your commitment, uh, your uh, interests uh, related to design matters. Um, even though you don't have uh, a degree in uh, a, a, a degree in uh, uh, design matters or disciplines, it is very important that uh, we can evaluate uh, your potential in that field. So um, whatever in your previous experience uh, and also personal interests uh, can uh, give us a picture of um, your peculiar uh, way to to enter uh, the, the idea of our programs. Uh, that is, uh, is uh, very nice to see and is what we are looking for. Sorry, Alexa, there's Mike who had asked about the reference letters. I saw has a question is if we have failed or what to focus on in the portfolio. I don't think we have time today to cover that, but we do may have portfolio sessions and I would recommend you attend those. You also, one of the questions, if we haven't been uh, accepted or will we be notified as to why? That's, we usually have a, a committee of three to four people looking at portfolios and with, you know, a few, uh, three, four, 500 portfolios, that's big. Sometimes as you're applying, we also do, there's a general what to put in the, how to, what to think of a portfolio, what to include, what to consider. But we also do sessions where you come with your portfolio before the application is there and you do get the portfolio review. So I would also recommend definitely doing that. Great. Thank you, Catherine. That's that's perfect. Um, we do have another question here about the transition back to uh, in-class learning post-COVID. Is there a possibility of doing some foundation year work through online correspondence for the Master of Landscape Architecture? So that is a, <laughs> a good question, uh, but we do have an answer, I think, uh, e even though everything always is uh, fluctuating. Um, so starting this fall, uh, we are back uh, uh, in person at school and we, we, we leave uh, that as a, an amazing opportunity, very relieving <laughs> opportunity after uh, estimating circumstances. Um, also because there are uh, field works, uh, um, the studio is based on uh, uh, peer reviews uh, and, uh, and co-sharing as a studio space and the studio experience. So in our, in our uh, programs, uh, staying together and uh, learn from each other and uh, learn from the field uh, on the field is, is essential. At the same time, uh, we all uh, learned uh, uh, from, uh, from uh, the last year uh, even more the potential of um, remote uh, um, connections uh, that uh, it enables us uh, to, um, 
to connect with uh, external professionals, uh, with a guest lecturer in the international context uh, very easily. So to the other hand, on the other hand, we don't want to lose uh, the great opportunities uh, to still uh, have uh, some activities uh, remotely for this uh, capacity of uh, the online realm. Uh, um, to, to gather us very, very, very easily from all across the world. So my perception is that uh, there will be anyway opportunities for uh, online uh, experiences. Great, okay, thank you. Um, we have another question here. I think Jen, uh, maybe you can weigh in. Uh, we have a student who's in a fourth year of civil engineering asking how often we get applicants from civil engineering, but maybe we can talk more about broadly what disciplines we accept and then also how we do the um, class waivers. Okay, I can start. Um, so engineering, we do have applicants every year, but it's not a big group. Um, we actually think we get more for planning than we do for architecture, which is interesting. Um, but yeah, definitely a great background to have, for, of course. So, um, and then I think from the U Calgary um, kind of realm of undergrad programs, we, like we were mentioned earlier, urban studies. So the BA in urban studies is the most common one we see. We do see a lot of fine arts students. We do see quite a few business students. Um, and then kind of a mix of everything else. Like we've had zoology students come through and we definitely get interior design students from the other um, design schools in Alberta and, and across the country and internationally as well. Um, so yeah, it's a really good mix. Um, so that, like Catherine mentioned in her presentation, it's nice to have all those different backgrounds and perspectives in the, in the classes together. So, mm -hmm. um, and course waivers, are you talking about if you have taken a course and you think you don't need to take it again kind of thing? Yep. Okay, so for MLA and MR, you can, for the foundation year, you can waive a course if you've taken an equivalent um, or already taken it, like say as an open study student or an undergrad. Um, so basically, if it's at University of Calgary, you've taken it, that's as very straightforward. You email me, we get it all sorted out. If you've got taken a course at another program or another school, sorry, then um, we need course outlines and transcripts. Um, there's a whole process for it. So it depends where you're coming from. If you're applying to the Master of Architecture and you've got three courses that you think you don't need to take again from the foundation year, it all goes through me. So you would email me and let me know and I would tell you what we need. We would have instructors review for content. This is very important for accreditation purposes. We can't let you leave with your degree if we can't con confirm you've covered all the content of the requirements. So that's basically how it works. Okay, and touching. Yeah. Sorry, can I add something to the previous point about the schools? Um, how can I get in? Why did I get re rejected? One of the things I think is important is the schools are different. They have different areas of focus. And so if you are in Calgary, that's where looking at the work we produce is very important. Looking at what the focus of the instructor's research is important. So if somebody comes and has a certain idea of what they think architecture they want to pursue, and they come in and we're quite, we have quite a strong digital fabrication component and they're not interested in that, they're going to come and be frustrated. So I think it is very important to see, uh, and that's where when we say speaking with your own voice, for you to start seeing what interests, like we have people now who are very interested in, in the social justice component. And uh, so I would say study, I know sometimes if you live here, it's like it's the easier one or it's there are other considerations, but that is an important one. And attending how to improve the portfolio is one that I see it is again, attending lectures. We have design matters. We have open reviews um, that gets you into the understanding the scope and the framework of what the school, what the students do and helps you develop. So again, the portfolio, we're not looking for that you already know how to do the thing is more seeing a person's voice, what their interests are and how they present that. And it is a competitive process. Um, as I said, we have a committee that reviews the work. So it's not just some people have a 3.9 GPA, but not a strong portfolio. So it, it, there's, we have a, you know, an algorithm, a, a human algorithm, I would say, where we balance out a different strengths and uh, to, to work uh, to, for people who do get in. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, we have one last question here about um, work experience. So I've had a few inquiries about uh, mature applications, how work experience is considered in the application. For which program? I don't have that. I'm assuming for the MARC program, um, but I'm not sure. Generally, Jen, you can uh, like, Generally, unless it's quite a lot of experience, you do need the degree. Um, if you have the degree and undergraduate and you have, I mean, again, there is consideration. We'll, it's on a one-to-one -one basis, but generally you do need the degree if to get into the two-year one. But we've had in the past somebody who has incredible portfolio, incredible, uh, you know, a mature student that uh, gets considered. Great, Jen, do you have anything to add to that? I was just gonna say, there's kind of two ways to look at it. So um, in terms of getting credit for maybe work experience, that's one thing. And that's, it's, it's kind of tricky. The Faculty of Graduate Studies makes it very difficult. <laughs> like Catherine said, you have basically have to have the degree to get any, um, or you know previous courses to get credit that way. Um, but in terms of enhancing your application, if you've got experience working in a firm or you've been you know, and a technologist for years, and now you want to become an architect, like anything like that, of course, you know, also dependent on the portfolio and everything else in the, in the application is, is obviously going to strengthen things, you know, in a good way, especially if, if you have employer references, you know, strong CV, all of that is going to be helpful, of course. Great. Okay. Um, I think we have time for a couple more questions. I just have two more. So the first one is, how are international applicants considered for MARC? Are they considered for the two-year stream? How does that work? Jen, I think that's a you. <laughs> okay, so um, unless your degree is um, accredited in North America, so um, that usually means by the CACB, the Canadian Architectural Certification Board, or NAB, the National Ar Architecture Accreditation Board, um, we ask those international students, even if they have a Bachelor of Architecture, to take the foundation year, just because um, we have to make sure we can tick all the boxes for accreditation and that your, your degree can be certified, you've covered everything. Um, there's often areas that aren't covered in international degrees that we cover in our foundation year. And I think the whole program, the three-year program, as a comprehensive learning experience is very important. And so I think they feel, you know, learning here, learning in this context, in this environment in Canada, that foundation year is very important. I mean, maybe Catherine, you could speak a bit more to the content of foundation year and what you learn there, but I think that's the reason, the big reasons accreditation, but there's also other nuances around the reasons. Yeah, again, some of it is when we say, for example, the graphics course, it's not how you do architectural drawings. It's some of the programs we learn that then get to build on in terms so the senior studios and the robotics and the digital fabrication, that's an important one. Um, and that was in response to a lot of students who used to, I think before the rules change, would come into uh, to the second year and found it was just too big a shift and there was too much to catch up and they felt they were behind and advised that it would be better. But there is also the, the, the regulation that you do need an accredited program. Again, some students apply and get uh, some uh, advanced standing for some of the courses. Okay. I would also add, uh, this is more uh, a, a general conceptual <laughs> framework to the problem that um, since uh, our programs are based on the studio courses and the studio courses uh, deal with um, um, specific projects uh, uh, in a specific context. Uh, uh, so not necessarily if, uh, if uh, the name of the course you already got from uh, um, in your education background uh, is uh, the same or similar, that doesn't mean that the learning experience is equivalent. Uh, because of the studio peculiarity is uh, to engage students uh, in, a, in a project uh, that leads uh, to specific knowledge and skills uh, development. So it is not separated from the case study. Uh, is very is very integrated with the case study. So I would say that if the case study 
or the context uh, of study and inquiry is uh, significantly different uh, from um, what you, you already have in your, uh, in your portfolio, that could also mean that uh, is not considered equivalent. But as we mentioned, uh, it is on a case-by-case -case basis uh, that uh, the, the request uh, is, uh, is addressed and uh, evaluated. Oh, thank you, Enrica. You bring a, a good point. I mean, one of the things, for example, people who have a building science degree from a country that doesn't deal with cold climate or, you know, there are certain consideration building science, things are always being upgraded. So say I did this five years ago, things have changed quite a bit. So that's where also we look, that's why we look at things more on a one-on-one -on -one basis. I see there's a question from Tejal. Uh, are you allowed to practice architecture with a minor? Um, you're not allowed, I mean, you can practice whenever you want. You can't sign papers. You can't call yourself an architect, even with a master's. That's why I said you have to do a three-year internship and then pass the exam. And that's when you are legally an architect. Okay. But you can, you know, if you have a good portfolio and an office, you're working in an office, yes, but you wouldn't be an architect. And I think it's a, a big part of it is risk management and the responsibility because if a building falls, you know, that's a big thing to carry. And the legal responsibilities as well related to professional practice. Yeah. Okay. Well, that was our last question there. So, Thank you, everyone. Thank you to our presenters and to all of um, you who've attended this session today. We did pop the admission email into the chat. So if you have any extra questions that we didn't get to address today, please contact us. We'd be very happy to help you through um, the application process and to answer any of your, your questions. So thank you, everyone. And thank you for your interest in, uh, in our school and our programs. Uh, it is always uh, nice uh, to, to have the opportunity to discuss about what we are doing and what we are offering. So thank you for, uh, for your attention.